Hi, I'm Christopher Peter Macris, a lead data scientist at Data IQ. Hi, I'm Krishna Vadakati, the ML product manager at Data IQ. And we're here today to talk to you about AutoML and Data IQ DSS. Hey, Krishna. Hey, CBM. What's up? Looks like we're on deck to join forces for a product days demo. Yeah, that's right. I'm just about to book my flight to come out to hang out with you, but I'm having a little bit of trouble. Ugh, flying, it's always the worst. You're either rushing to the airport just to find that your flight's been delayed or running through the terminal trying to catch the last minute to board. There's got to be a better way. You know what? There is. Luckily, I've actually been working on a project in Data IQ DSS to predict whether a flight will be delayed. Want to take a look? Sure. Um, I mean, it sounds a little complicated. Well, with the AutoML features of DSS, the complicated intricacies of data modeling become quick and easy. No matter if you're a seasoned data scientist or diving into data analyses for the first time, DSS is there to help guide you every step of the way. Let's take a look. You may already be familiar with DSS projects. I've been collaborating with a bunch of other teammates in this flow to help us predict whether flights leaving the airports of New York City will be delayed by more than 15 minutes. Whoa, that's overwhelming at first. But I can see you kept it pretty organized with the flow zones and tags. Looks pretty clean. But I've got to be honest, I don't even know where to start. Well, don't be overwhelmed. I promise it's really pretty simple, especially with Data IQ's guided AutoML built right in. We'll be honing in on the machine learning and data modeling capabilities of our flow right here. OK. So what do I do if I want to model the data on flights we've already seen? Well, that's exactly where the guided AutoML comes into play. With any data set, we can easily perform both supervised predictions and unsupervised clustering by accessing the lab. For predictions, first I'll type in my target variable, and then I can select options for quick prototypes, interpretable models for business analysts, and high performance models. That's a lot of options. How do I know which one to use? How do I compare and evaluate all of these models that I've built? Well, I've gone ahead and already built a bunch of competing models. Let's take a look at the results together. DSS makes it easy to design, build, and compare models through an intuitive user interface. It's nicely organized, too, especially when you've got a lot of different sessions. I can see you've already done a lot here. Random forests, logistic regressions, decision trees. How did you configure each of these algorithms? Great question. Well, over in the Design tab, DSS provides a step-by-step -step walkthrough of all the different tools at our disposal to help us construct models exactly how we want, without having to write a single line of code. That's impressive. So is this where I can choose the metrics against which I'll optimize the models and deal with things like feature handling and generation? Exactly. We can tell DSS things like which variables we want to include or exclude, and even how to rescale them or impute missing values. That's great. But what about all the different algorithms? I've heard that they each operate in their own special way, and especially with all the different parameter choices available. Luckily, DSS keeps all that organized too. We can easily explore the various parameter options one at a time and even learn more about how each algorithm works if we ever need a refresher. Wow. Seems like we're just scraping the surface on all that the design tab has to offer. But I think I'm ready to start going further. Let's build some models. Is that what the train button does? Yes, exactly. Once we're ready to go, DSS will train our customized models and help us compare them based on runtime and various other aspects. Once again, DSS keeps everything organized by sessions, individual models, 
and even an evaluation table of metrics. That's really clear and helpful. It looks like the random forest is one for the session. Can we dig a bit deeper? It'll be interesting to know what's actually driving those predictions. Sure thing. DSS's auto ML features make results easy to digest by breaking the details down into smaller parts and helping us investigate our model from both interpretation and performance standpoints. So for random forest, for example, can we see example decision trees or even the most important variables? You know, the ones that have the highest predictive power? Exactly. We can see here that the average arrival delay is strongly associated with whether or not the next flight will be delayed. Mm. I heard that DataIQ9 introduces a new interactive scoring feature that allows everyone from data scientists to business users to test out assumptions and see predictions for different scenarios. That's right. We can ask various hypothetical questions about our outcomes and see how the predictions may change as our data changes. Kind of like asking, what if? Exactly. For example, I could ask, what if my destination city is Boston? What if it's Atlanta? How about if it's Denver? Well, how do my predictions vary? I can quickly add each of these scenarios to my comparator and investigate how the different predicted outcomes may vary. In this case, among these three destination cities, the comparator says that Denver has the highest likelihood of delay, whereas Atlanta has the lowest. It seems that even the day of week and time of day impacts our predictions in different ways across these states. That's pretty interesting. And you know what? That's not all. One of my favorite evaluation features is the Confusion Matrix tab. That sounds confusing. Once again, I promise it's actually rather simple. Here we can see the prevalence of different types of errors based on changes in our model's cutoff threshold. Not only can you optimize your model to the metric that best aligns with your business objectives, but also you can further influence the training by inputting values into this cost matrix. Um, by doing this, can you give higher and lower weights to true versus false positives or true versus false negatives? Right, exactly. I see. So if we're predicting whether a plane is likely to experience an equipment failure, we might want to more strongly penalize false negatives to reduce occurrences where we'd miss such critical signal. Yep. And on the flip side, if we're predicting whether someone is likely to miss their flight connection, we might want to more strongly penalize false positives to reduce cases where customers arrive panting at the gate only to find that their seat has been given to a standby passenger. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Yeah, I really don't want that to happen to you. Another great feature of Data IQ 9 is that of model assertions. Model assertions are a series of checks predefined by subject matter experts that show whether a model performs as expected in common sense or known edge case scenarios. I guess in most cases, if the previous flight arrives early, you'd expect the next flight not to be delayed. That makes intuitive sense, so I'd hope for our model to reflect that reality. Luckily, we've accounted for that case in our custom model assertions already. Rest assured, with Data IQ 9, we'll know if a model is producing counterintuitive results, even if classic performance metrics, like the ROC curve, claim otherwise. Hey, wait a second. Can you go back to your model assertions? It looks like we're missing flights from Data IQ Airlines. Ah, uh, yeah. It unfortunately hasn't yet gotten off the ground. Pun totally intended. Good one. Yeah, you caught me. I snuck that one in there just to help us talk about the diagnostic checks too. That's also a new feature that helps give us a heads up for some common sanity checks like overfitting and data leakage problems that we might encounter in data science modeling. 
Well, besides that awful joke, everything else seems to check out all right with our model. So now that we're good to go, what's next? Well, I'm glad you asked. So far, we haven't written a single line of code making the AutoML interface a seamless walkthrough for anyone, no matter what your level of data science fluency may be. But don't let the simplicity fool you. Data IQ can extend far beyond the visual model building interfaces. Right. I hear that more seasoned data scientists can automatically export to a Jupyter notebook. I think it'll create a Python notebook with the code and comments associated with the model, allowing you to customize all aspects of the model training even further. Is that right? Right, that's spot on. And DataIQ also makes data and model governance extremely easy with the option to export model documentation with the click of a button. Our methodology, experimentation, and various model performance charts are thoroughly tracked and displayed in an export to a PDF or Word document. So now that we're done, can we deploy our model back to the flow and use it to score unseen data? Exactly. Good thing, because Product Days is just about to start. Don't you have to catch a flight? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I really should pack my bags and get over there real quick. All right. I'll see you soon.